First thing I like to do is pull the staples out of the boxes. Uh, I've been cut so many times by these things. They scratch the bike when you're pulling them out. If you just have a pair of side cutters or pliers, it's really easy just to remove those five staples first. Break the glue. And, oh, and look at that. Behold. All right, let's get this thing unpackaged and in the stand. Okay, get the handlebar on and just pay attention to the routing of the cables and housing. And we'll just snug these up using the etched markings here on the handlebar. Just get that centered at the right angle. There we are. And tighten these down to five newton meters. And then we'll align the bar and stem with the fork. We're looking down the front of the bar towards the lowers of the fork. Let's see when that's centered. And starting with the lower pinch bolt, just bring these snug. Also, while we're here, the four mil Allen wrench, we just check to make sure this top cap assembly is snug one to two newton meters. That just sets the bearing tension. These pinch bolts on the stem are what lock the steering. So set these to five newtons. Uh, while we're up here, we'll use a two mil Allen wrench and install the front brake housing into this cable guide. And then again, we can tie down any uh, rogue housing here with a zip tie. Next we'll install the front wheel. Just flip the lever down on the axle here and it sits into some tooling to help you loosen that off. Get the grease on the axle. And then paying close attention to the rotor, watching where it goes into the caliper between the pads, then get the dropouts lined up and install your axle. So again, threading this in, using the handle as the tool, bring it up snug and then fold over the quick release to lock it in place. Front brake adjust. The five mil Allen wrench, loosen the mounting bolts for the caliper. Just back them off enough that it gives you some free movement in the caliper there. I'm gonna spin the wheel, pull and hold the brake, and then we'll just snug these bolts back up again. You hear it's still slightly rubbing. We can adjust the caliper. Just looking in, there we go. While we're working on brakes, we'll move to the back and do the same. Loosen off the bolts, rotate the wheel, pull and hold the brake lever, and then we'll just snug these back up. And then you can do your final fine tune adjustment. Nice feature with these brakes is we've got some adjustment for the uh, rest point for the lever where it sits. So for smaller hands, using a two mil Allen wrench, you can find the bolt there and then we're just going to unthread this bolt and draw the lever closer into the bar for its resting position. Great for smaller hands. We'll install the pedals, just a bit of grease on the threads. Just make sure you identify that they're left and right, they're marked on the end of the spindle left side left hand thread, right side right hand thread, and uh, we'll go ahead and tighten those up. They've got tooling on the inside of the spindle for 6 mil, or on the outside for 15 mil open end wrench. Check the gears, 
drop it down to the very bottom there. Just a note on these Presta valves, uh, they've got the dust cap you remove. When you need to put air in, uh, you have to open the valve core by unthreading the nut, the lock nut at the top, and then just depress that, and that just frees up the valve to be able to function when you put your pump on. So you'll need a pump that works with a Presta. Um, majority of the pumps do. And uh, when you're finished again, thread that locking nut back down and just snug that up, sealing the valve, and reinstall your dust cap. You'll notice this pump here is set up for use with a Schrader valve, but we need it for the Presta. Most pumps are interchangeable or have some sort of, this one we flip the head around and we've got the Presta setting right there. I just want to take a moment to talk to you about the rear shock on the Roka Suda 20 and 24. This is the 24 here, 140 mil travel bike. Uh, what we're looking for, for in terms of settings for the shock for your child's rider weight, generally the thumb is a, a pound of air for every pound of the child's rider weight. Uh, so that's a good base to start with, but ultimately what we're looking for is a measurement of sag. So if this is the full travel of the bike, then we mark, move the O-ring to midway, that's 50% of the travel, and we move it again, half of that again, to 25%, 25 to 30%. Essentially, we're looking for the shock, when the child sits on the bike, the shock to depress this much. Now it gives it 25% of negative travel to be able to drop into holes on the trail. So what we do is, with our high pressure air shock pump, uh, we get to that base setting for the rider weight, so say the child is 100 pounds, and we get this to 100 PSI here. And remove the shock pump. Ensure the shock is in its open position, it's not in the locked position. So we're open. And have the child sit on the bike and in a rider position, you know, slide the O-ring up against the uh, bottom of the air can and have the child get off the bike gently. And what we're looking for is that they've compressed the shock just with their weight, 25% of the travel. The Xfusion Velvet RL2 fork, it's got uh, air spring and cartridge damping on the other side. Uh, handy little chart on the, lowers here, identifying the base setting for your rider weight. So at a 100 pound rider, we'd be looking at 55 PSI. So you take your high pressure shock pump here, install. This currently has 85 PSI, we're gonna bleed out down to 55. That sets our spring. Now to control the spring, we need to use our damper features. The blue dial on top is a lockout switch. Counterclockwise is open. Clockwise to, to the end of the stop is locked. So we run that open and then at the bottom we've got a, our rebound dial. So we have our rebound here. Um, imagine looking up at the dial, we want to decrease the damping for a 100 pound rider. Back this pretty much all the way out, maybe a click or two in. And that controls how fast the fork opens again after being compressed. That's got the build. I'm just gonna do a bolt check front to back and then we'll set it down, set the seat height. Uh, we've done the stem and we've got these all tightened down. Uh, brakes we've adjusted. And then we'll move our way back through the suspension on the frame. Five mil Allen wrench, we can check the shock hardware, make sure that that's nice and tight. Uh, six mil for the rear. Good. Again, five mil for the captured bolts here. Six mil, these are all snug and they should be. This is a good thing if you're gonna use this bike in the park 
in any kind of bike park, it's always a good thing. They call it the five, five run bolt check. And it's an important thing. We're not looking to tighten anything tighter. We're just making sure that it is in fact tight. Uh, you also notice on the back here, there's no quick release. It's a five mil uh, Sintase axle. So we just want to make sure we keep that snugged up as well. As well as the Sintase uh, derailleur hanger adjustment bolt. And then with any clutch derailleur, you want to keep an eye on the mounting bolt and make sure that that's snug. Uh, five mil on the horse link and four mil for the cranked pinch bolts. 12 to 14 Newtons on that. Okay, here we have it. The Roka Suda 24. Uh, highlights for me on this bike, well obviously full suspension, uh, get the kit into a 140 mil travel rear suspension bike, uh, well front and rear ultimately. Uh, it's a horse link, so it's known for its efficiency for climbing and pedaling. It's not going to bob all over the place while the kid's trying to hammer up the hill in front of you. Um, Hydroform tubing, so you get into uh, the fork again, the velvet, nice long travel. Uh, with a 15 mil axle, air spring that you can adjust from 50 psi on. Uh, we've got the new brood Maxion DH, so it's two wraps of Kevlar from bead to bead. Nice heavy tire, tubeless ready, tubeless ready rims. Routing for internal dropper, uh, we've got the 155 mil crank, uh, two piece crank with the direct mount chain ring, the narrow wide, uh, so nice easy to change. 10 speed uh, cluster on the back with the clutch derailleur, uh, meaning no need for a chain guide and no dropping chains, no noise. Lock on grips, pivotal saddle, fore and aft adjustment, and heck of a color scheme. <laughs> there you have it, Roka Suda 24.